Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Shanae and today I'm going to talk to you about all things baking essentials. This is part two of my uh, kitchen tools and gadgets series and in my previous video I talked about, about cooking essentials, everything, the basic tools and gadgets, pots and pans for start cooking at home. And today in this video, I'm going to share with you all the things that you need to start baking at home. And we'll go ahead and start with pans and sheets in no particular order. Uh, I will just talk about whatever I have under my hand, okay? First, I find muffin pans is one of the most important uh, tools in baking. Once you have regular baking pan, you can make cupcakes, muffins, uh, what have you, upside down mini cakes, like my popular peach cakes, for example. You can make so many different things like egg muffins, regular muffins, cupcakes, all the things. Another thing you do absolutely need is a good quality baking sheet. Now there are so many different baking sheets out there and my favorite is this is called Baker's Half Stainless Steel Baking Sheets. They're heavy duty, they don't warp like a regular thin baked cookie sheets do, and I have like five, six of these sheets. This is less used, um, very nice looking one, but I have really ugly looking ones also. My go-to baking sheets are this, called Baker's Half. I got it from Sam's Club, but you can buy it on Amazon or anywhere you can get um, kitchen tools. Next, I find eight inch or nine inch square baking pan is essential for baking. Here you can make brownies. Who doesn't love brownies, right? I love brownies and uh, baking brownies in eight or nine inch baking pan is perfect. I have eight inch glass pan, but I would recommend getting a stainless steel or metal baking pan because it conducts the heat better and cooks evenly, but I have glass one because I like to stick to one or two versions of the things. I just have glass one and it works for me just fine. And the next pan is springform pan. Springform pan is really good for baking cheesecake. Without a springform pan, you won't be able to bake cheesecake. Uh, at least you won't be able to remove the sides and um, bake delicious cheesecake. So I think if you would like to cook cheesecakes, definitely get a springform pan. The next essential thing is round cake pans. Now, this is essential if you're planning to make cakes like sponge cake, regular yellow cake, white cake. Hey! Okay, be quiet, okay? So, I find nine inch cake pan is perfect size, but I recommend getting two of the whatever size you are going with, like two nine inch pans or two seven inch pans. If you are into smaller cakes, this seven inch pan is perfect. Always do get two pans because when you're making layer cakes, you do wanna have, um, divide the batter into baking pans. So that's that. And the next essential baking tool is bread pan. Like really good bread pan is essential for everyday baking. For example, if you're going to bake my banana bread, I have a video for banana bread, really simple basic recipe. You do need a nice bread pan like this. Now next you need cooling rack. Cooling rack is for um, cooling cookies or anything like that. So definitely do get a, a rack or two cooling racks. Another tip while I remember this, when you are baking something in a glass or Pyrex dish like this, never ever set a hot baking uh, glass dish on the counter like this um, because they will break, they will shatter from the shock, they won't be able to transfer heat anywhere, so it's really important to set hot uh, glass baking dish on the cooling rack like this so that heat can go somewhere and cools the pan properly. So up next, I'm going to talk to you about the, all the little gadgets and tools, so stick around and we'll talk about the next. Okay, let's talk about little tools and gadgets for baking, absolutely essential. Without this, it's going to be really hard to start baking. Um, 
In no particular order, again, I'll just talk about things that under my hands. So, uh, these are my favorite, favorite tools, uh, cookie scoops. And funny enough, I don't necessarily use them for cookies. I use them everything but cookies, actually. Uh, I like to, I have all three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Most often I use the large size. It scoops up perfect amount of batter for cupcakes. Like when you're baking cupcakes or muffins, if you just fill it with one scoop and fill one each uh, cavity, cupcake cup, it's perfect amount for muffins or cupcakes to fill to the top and not over. So cookie scoops are essential. I also like to use the small or medium sized cookie scoops for frosting cupcakes and whatnot. So very, very handy. Uh, for with the large cookie scoop, I also measure out the pancakes and crepe batter and so many uses. I will link into the article I wrote about cookie scoops, what, what I use them for. So I'll link it in the description below, but definitely get a one or two sizes of cookie scoops. Up next, you definitely do need to have a measuring Spoons, these are very convenient to measuring out the baking soda, salt, baking powder, those small things, and even vanilla extract uh, in general. Very, very important. I like this ones. I've been having, I've had this for a very long time, years, years, years. What I love about this specific measuring spoons is that they're magnetic, stick together in the drawer, and it doesn't make a mess. And also it has two sides, one round size and one narrow size. So when you need to dig into the spice jar, for example, it fits perfectly. And also when you're measuring dry and liquid stuff, you can also not cross contaminate. That's very, very convenient. I love this. Up next, pastry brush. I think it's really nice to have, especially when you're baking pies or tarts that we would like to brush on egg wash it's really convenient without it it's just really hard next silicone spatulas like <laughs> i'm obsessed with silicone spatulas my favorite i have all the different sizes shapes and whatnot everything i love this one uh, silicone scoop it's for small jobs it's really perfect and comfortable and also has a spreader on this side it, this was from Tavala. I will link it down below in the description. People always ask me where it's from and in the pic from the pictures and everything. So I, I really love this. I have two different sizes. And up next, I have this one. In general, I like silicone spatulas that are all one piece so that it's easier to clean. For example, this one. This one is my favorite too. It's from OXO, but it has this... Uh, they're separated, you can detach and wash, but I, I find it kind of gross. So after a little bit, I usually replace this because it just gets really disgusting inside. So I prefer this one piece silicone spatula. And this one is large, it's perfect for my macarons. This one is small, perfect for stirring little things. And I love this one too, but again, it has a detached thing and just things gather in there you know get stuffed okay up next these are offset spatula really convenient when you're frosting cakes and cupcakes uh, you don't need to have two i would go with a large one if you're going to frost cakes it makes it really job easier unlike the regular spatula it just makes it really nice and smooth it's really essential i think up next, whisk. You have to have a whisk to make caramel sauce, all kinds of sauces and whisking things. It's really, really important to have. Also, uh, measuring cups. M measuring cups are essential, especially if you bake American style recipes. Uh, but I have to say, I use them rarely. I use them only on the sugars and whatnot. I don't like to measure flour with um, measuring cups because it's really easy to mismeasure dry goods with measuring cups. Instead, I highly recommend 
getting a scale. Like I, I find it really much easier to work with a scale than uh, measuring cups because I, here's how I work. I put my scale here and I put my bowl and with a bowl, I just can zero out, add my flour, zero it out again and measure my sugar and whatnot without dirty bunch of um, measuring cups. I find it really easy and it's very accurate. All my recipes are tested with both um, scale and measuring cups, but know that I basically always bake with a scale. Yeah, even though I do use scale more often, I still find measuring cups pretty useful too. Up next, sifter. Sifter is very, very important in baking because when a lot of recipes for cakes and cupcakes usually uh, call for sifting dry ingredients. Sifting does two jobs. Combining like dry ingredients like flour and baking soda, baking powder and whatnot uh, really well. And also second purpose is to aerate the dry ingredients to create that fluffy, delicious cakes or cupcakes. Very, very important. And also for my macarons, obviously we sift all the dry ingredients. Part of it is to aerate, add volume to the dry goods. And another, or oh, also third reason that you need to sift your dry ingredients is to remove any lumps and um, clumps. So for example, if you're baking with cake flour, it's especially important because cake flour tends to clump up more so than all-purpose flour. And it's really important to sift it and remove all those clumps so that you don't get dry, um, dry flour lumps in your cookies or breads and cakes. Now, this is pretty important. I would say it's not essential, essential, but it comes in really handy, especially when you're cooking uh, cut out cookies. I find this um, circle cutters very convenient. I love this set because it comes with different shapes and you can make so many different things. Like cookies, if you don't want to invest in many different cookie shape uh, cutters, you can use circle ones and you can create different um, shapes with them as well. So I find it very con convenient. Rolling pins. Rolling pins are important to ro roll out cookie dough, pie dough, all what have you, lots of things that you can do with the uh, rolling pins. Definitely have to have a rolling pin. Up next, pastry bag is important when, especially if you are baking lots of cakes and cupcakes, you do wanna have a uh, pastry bag. This is a multi-use pastry bag. I like this one particularly because it has a coating here. It's not all cloth. I don't kind of like all cloth one because uh, I feel like things are gonna sip through. Probably it doesn't, but I like this. I think it's coated. I don't know what it's coated with, but I like this one. Next, uh, piping tips. I have lots of different piping tips, but my favorite two, these are two most important, I feel like. This star shape one is really nice. Um, I love especially how it pipes beautiful designs with very little effort. And I'm not really good with decorating piping techniques, but this makes me look like a pro. And also you can use it for piping eclairs, and yeah, there's so many different uses for it. And then playing the round tip is also gorgeous. It's important for macarons, but also like for frosting cupcakes or cakes, it comes in really handy. Now let's talk about mixer. I recommend electric mixer for all the beginner bakers. You don't have to invest in big stand mixer like uh, my KitchenAid mixer. I started with this small hand mixer and I took it, this one is really basic one. I haven't get rid of it because from time to time for small jobs, I like to use this one instead of um, dirtying up the big one. So this is very convenient uh, hand mixer. If you, your budget allows, get the stand mixer because it's really comfortable, convenient, but the hand mixer is sufficient. Oh, I almost forgot one more important thing a mixing bowl. You definitely do need to have a mixing bowl to mix your batter, frosting, or anything. When you have a hand mixer and a mixing bowl, you can basically whip up anything. So 
So I really hope this was helpful. If you just started baking in your kitchen, I hope you will get some of these tools and gadgets. And if you have any questions about specific uh, tools or anything that I mentioned here today, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to stick around and learn more about my kitchen tools and gadgets, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. In my next video, I will be talking about my favorite meal prep tools and also my favorite small kitchen appliances. And lastly, I will share my not essential, but nice to have tools and gadgets in the next video. So stick around and hope you'll find this videos helpful. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.